Today what I'd like to discuss is a way to build a valveless pulse jet engine that still creates, let's call it a pneumatic valve, when it's in operation. All of what I'm going to discuss here is going to be based on the fact that this engine is in motion and we have a flow, an open stream flow of air being compressed down all of our intake tubes. This open stream flow of air is going to create our pneumatic valving system which takes place right here. So what we have is our typical forward facing tube for a valveless pulse jet engine, not the kind that has the big horseshoe to it, but just a forward facing tube that we know the volume of air coming through it. Remember, air is going to weigh about 76 pounds per every thousand cubic feet that you're going to put through this engine. This means if you wanted a pulse jet engine capable of developing 76 pounds of thrust, you would have to cycle 1,000 cubic feet of air through that engine every second. That's an awful lot of air to put through something, so it's going to be very, very large to be able to do that without creating a lot of resistance through the tube. I've zoomed in here on the engine's working parts on the, let's call it a pneumatic valve engine, using only the pressure of air working against itself to create a valve area. Basically where you see that star right in the center is going to be a fluctuating valve based on the combustion cycles taking place inside the combustion zone right back behind it right here. Any slight pressure from the combustion chamber moves that valve into the positioning that we're wanting inside of the engine. So what's happening here is you've got an open stream airflow coming through your main breather tube in the front because you've got forward momentum. And the faster you get going, the higher the pressure that that's coming in at. You've also got open stream flow coming in at these tubes as well. Now you could have four, you could have eight, you could have many of these tubes around the outside depending on the size of your center tube. You're going to want to generate enough volume with enough force resistance to counteract the force that's coming in from your main center tube to create a nice little disc basically of air pressure that's fanning out in all directions and you want to be able to cycle that disc right against the opening in a vibration so in your hertz in your cycle the valve is literally slapping between these two valve openings. In this design what I've done is add the air and the fuel to mix in the outer tubes. This does a few different things. First of all it allows the fuel and the air to mix properly over a long distance. Second of all it's also adding to our overall mass in the flow stream here. So we're putting the fuel in with the flow as long as we can match the same velocity that's being generated from these tubes. The velocity being generated from this main center tube we can now increase the pressure over the overall energy with the impact force generated from these tubes with a smaller amount of air. And that will give us a little bit more control because we can actually control where the actual valve sits by controlling the density of the air fuel mixture. So there will be a little bit of fluctuation where that valve sits. The more fuel we need to dump into it, the faster we're going, the more mass that's going to push against that disc that's being created by the two air flows coming together and push that closed a little bit more because you're going to need less air the faster you go. So basically the faster this gets going, the more fuel you're putting in the engine, the more that pneumatic valve is going to close. This is the same engine design but internally housed inside of the jet body. Now you're also using a better form of ram air around an outside collar ring here to force the air through your air fuel mixing system and back around to help create your pneumatic valve. You still have the main airstream flow coming through the center pipe here so there's the input there for through your center air inlet. So you have your reverse air inlets up here through the outer collar. High pressure air coming from forward momentum pressing through this whole system helps create that pneumatic valve. So here's a look down the first prototype engine that was built with the idea of the pneumatic valve inside of there. So we have the outer pipes here which I showed you in that diagram curving around inside the engine and aiming right down the center of where this pipe comes in. Your main center pipe comes into the combustion area with a very fine gap between the two of them and it's very fine. You don't need much of a gap to feed the right volume of air especially as you get going faster. So what we need now to make this engine function all the way up to full velocity is to make sure that the entire area that you see here, even the little pipes, is all one velocity so a solid stream impacting it at the same velocity because the engine is designed to have a pretty well balanced flow of air to keep the pneumatic valve where it's supposed to be so that it'll oscillate due to the detonations taking place inside of the combustion chamber. You've got to have the exact amount of air going by the entire system which right now with the quick fire up I'm going to show you is just me putting in air into one of these holes. It did run, it did act like a pulse jet but it's not going to run at the full velocity or speed that it's capable of. Thank <laughs> you.